Electricast. There's a change happening in the way we live, the way we work, the way we spend our money and make our decisions. We are evolving to be more conscious in our actions in a way that serves the world and makes it a better place. Welcome to The Ethical Evolution. The Ethical Evolution podcast is brought to you by Ethical Change Agency. I'm Bindi, I'm the founder, and my mission is to help ethical entrepreneurs and holistic healers to find their voice through spiritual coaching and podcasting. I'm honoured to bring you the stories of those who create change through healing, kindness, innovation, purpose, and spirit. Understanding that to create collective change, we need to be the change. It all begins with us. Hey, before we get into this episode, I just wanted to let you know that you can now grab my album of guided meditations. It's called Source by Spirit and it's on all streaming platforms, including Spotify, Apple Music, Amazon, Tidal, YouTube Music and many more. There's 11 guided meditations ranging from 4 minutes through to 10 minutes to help you reset your mind and your body at any time. Okay, now let's get on with the show. Wishbone Wellness was born out of Melissa Harris's passion to help others thrive after major life events, focusing on transition and loss. Loss in any form can be devastating. It can make you question everything. But when you're ready and with the appropriate support, you can turn the loss into a thoughtful transition that can serve yourself in ways you may not have even imagined. Melissa believes life is about growth and honouring our gifts within to generate a thriving ecosphere. It was through her own coaching work that she was able to reveal a love of something that finally resonated, a deep curiosity for the creativity in all of us and a desire to help people reach their highest potential. Join us as Melissa shares her story of grief, loss, addiction, recovery and being of service. Welcome, Melissa, to The Ethical Evolution. Great. Thank you. So excited to be here, Bindi. Now, Melissa, awesome. for those people who don't know who you are and what you do, can you go ahead and tell us? Yeah. Um, my name is Melissa and I am founder of Wishbone Wellness, which is a company that was created out of um, the inspiration to help people through various degrees of loss and destabilizing life events so, um, so that they can get out of that stuckness and um, process all of those feelings that they that that grief and loss brings up for people and Mm. not just not just through bereavement but through other all forms of loss that we go through in this lived experience and just provide support and empowerment for them as they walk that path and um, oftentimes it can be a moment of like everything's changed now and I I need to start anew Mm. and sometimes that's just a really hard thing to do. So that's what Wishbone is all about, is just empowering people um, and and going through that transformational time with them and helping them through that. Amazing stuff. Now, if we back up a little um, and look at your story, how did Wishbone come about um, from your experience? Um, My story, it it started started with a real like it's honestly it was a spiritual awakening it was just a, like a, a um kind of a moment of that that you know so many of us go through our our dark night of the soul kind mm. of something something major happens in my case it was the death of the two two people closest to me um my mom and dad and it and it and it was just an, an I was a very inexperienced um person with death I was it, 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 you know, it took me, it came out of left field. So all of it was incredibly destabilizing, but I also just hadn't grown up with a lot of experience with grief. And, um, and it just, it, it brought me to my knees, like they say, you mm-hmm. know, and, and, um, and I think in, in through working through that, um, I, 
my seeky, my seeker nature is, is just who kind of who I am. I, I, I was, a I was a little bit going down the path of destruction, mm. uh, uh, sort of, but it, but as I was doing that, I was also getting super curious about like death, to be mm. quite honest, you know, death, um, what happens, what, you know, these were, I, I came up, came up in a pretty religious household. And so I wanted to kind of branch out and, and get out into the world and see what, what, what is everyone in, in, you know, what are the, the, the greatest spiritual leaders of our time and be, you know, from, from past and moving forward, what does everybody say about that? So I, you know, I sought out several mediums and I sought out, you know, just, I went down so many different paths and, and I even um, joined um, a vol- I became a volunteer at a grief group nonprofit, you know, because I just wanted to, in understanding other people, I wanted to understand myself mm. and process it through myself. And, and it was kind of that moment of, of all of that happening. It, it just really shook me open in a way it just not shook me open, but shook me awake. Mm. So really, so it really was like a, like a massive wake up call. I think sometimes we get a lot of little wake up calls in our lives and like little whispers and things that people talk about, but this was just one that um, really kind of smacked me across my face. And, um, and I, I just looked around and I was seeing kind of the destructive behavior I was doing, the job that I was in, my relationships. I mean, I just kind of re- looked at everything in my life mm. and realized it was pretty, pretty full circle misaligned. And so I sought out um, help with that and support with that. And I, you know, I worked with therapists and practitioners and coaches and, you know, all sorts of spiritual guides and you know, any kind of support I could bring in and, and it all was incredible. And so that's, that, that was my story. And, and through that, I, I realized that I didn't want to do the work that I had been doing for a couple decades. I just, it wasn't the thing that lit me up anymore. And, um, and, and then I just fell in love with, you know, this idea of helping people through loss, because Mm. I think it was the volunteering that I had done. You know, when I started going through that volunteering, I was in the rooms for hours and hours with people that it, it just, it pulled me in. I I fell in love with it. And I, I just saw that like, this is just such an incredible need that people don't also know how, like, we're not, we're taught how to, how to do this thing called grief or processing through life. And, and some people, handle it better than others and mm. I think it's it's a beautiful space to, to, to provide support to people and it can be so yeah. easy in those moments of grief like an, an incredible loss to just want to numb that pain uh yeah. which you also attempted to do didn't you yes I did. I, I very much, I had a relationship with alcohol from a very young age. Um, so alcohol was my numbing, um, choice, um, mm. um, of product of choice there. But, um, and, and so I kind of just didn't really think anything of it for, for years and years until this happened. And then I really went into a, um, you know, not wanting to feel my feelings mm-hmm. phase and, and was, and was just, you know, I think it was actually, it was my therapist. It was, it was in a, in a session where she, I, I was telling her just an average story and she just stopped and she was like, that amount of alcohol would, would put me in like the hospital. Like mm-hmm. how do you, you know, and I, and it was just like a, I, you know, because when you kind of are in an environment with other people who are sort of doing the same thing, you don't think about it. And, and I also think like, sometimes we just have to hear things when we hear them. And then it, yeah. it's like that timing thing that happens. Mm, yep. you know? And wow, did I hear her? Mm. I heard her and I was like, I just, it took me aback. And I just really was like, you need to look at this. And so I, um, I got sober and that was, that was about three years ago now. And, and um, that was, you know, a really, that's been a really its own journey you know Mm. there's there's like there's grief and loss yeah there's like a sobriety journey and it's that's its own path but um 
but I was really thankful for her saying that because I just didn't have a lot of people in my life giving me that feedback. Yeah. Like, hey, did you ever look at like, that's actually a really a lot of amount to mm. take in in one sitting. Like, is that something, you know, and, and kind of just, but that's the beauty of therapy sometimes too, or just, or sitting across from someone who is your mirror, mm. you know, and that isn't your, you know, loved one, yeah. family member, or best friend, you know, somebody who's going to be like, it's okay. It's not that big of a deal. You're fine. You know, <laughs> like, it's amazing when we finally see ourselves, isn't it? Like what, what we're doing to ourselves and and yeah. how we're getting in our own way. And, you know, in those moments where I don't know, if, I don't I know about you, but um, I know when I've had the biggest grief and loss, it all happens at once and it's never just one thing. It's usually yeah. <laughs> two or three things at once and it's just like, all right then, we're doing all of this now. <laughs> um, yeah. But thank you so much. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you kind of like, okay, uh, there's there's some choices I can make here. Um, and I think it takes a lot of healing to be able to even recognize you have a choice. Would you agree? I, I would agree um, wholeheartedly. I mean, I think one of the biggest surprising um, ideas about, you know, giving up this substance, this one substance was the amount of that, that there was going to be a grieving process of myself within that, Yeah, you know, and, and I thought, you know, I, w- I was kind of giving myself a bunch of like, oh, attaboys, you know, like, good job, like you're doing something so good. And mm. until things started to settle in, and I was like, wow, I, that was such an identity of mine that I had to, that, you know, had to die Mm. and, you know, so that I could be reborn kind of in that like metaphoric way of butterfly, you know, it's kind of like, you you know, some things have to go and kind of be, okay, we have to like, you know, put this to sleep now. And this, that was, you know, your, your old self and, and like, let's, let's get into your, you know, what is your higher self or what's Mm. your future self looking for you? And, um, um, but that, that was even a grieving process. And that was very surprising to me, Mm. you know, just that that would be part of it. And, but now that I've talked to other people, you know, that, yeah. yeah, that is such a part of it. I speak to so many people who've suffered from some addiction or another and, you know, when they take that away, there's always a space there for something else. And would you say that the work that you do now is filling that space? Yes. Um, I, yeah, I think it's the work that it's the helping others is that is filling that space. And so I think, yeah, like a lot of, you know, that addict behavior Mm -hmm. kind of like Mm -hmm. thing that, you know, people talk about, um, it's like, where do you redirect your energy when you have this thing that was, you know, where do you, and I think, um, you know, help directing it towards helping others has been a huge part of it, but it's also just such there's also this like kind of insane love and uh insane isn't a good word I don't like to use that word but this voracious um curiosity of people Mm. and so it's so it's like you're you're curious about what's going on within and then you're also curious about what's going on with those that you're working with so that container of just curiosity is I I mean I I I, it's like I do it in my free time. It's crazy. I don't yeah. know about what you fill your free time with, but that's what it's like. Someone's like, oh, man, I went to a movie or I picked up a book or I went for a walk and listened to a comedy something. I'm like constantly listening to this type of content because it's just it's yeah, that's what I feel. I think that that you're talking to that void. Yeah. With. Yeah. Is, it's and so it's interesting to me. Yeah. yeah. It sounds as though you've truly found your passion there uh, and you know, for a lot of people who uh, do reach sobriety from whatever it may be, um, they tend to be of service to others, I've noticed. Yeah. So they yeah. they want to give back. They want to, you know, it's almost like um, righting their wrongs a, a little bit where uh, they want to be of service to others. And it's just a theme that I see, you know, and I think it's just such a beautiful thing, you know, to to do that as part of the healing. Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it's because ad- I think um, addiction by nature or numbing feelings by nature is like, 
it's so, it's so self I'm using yeah. quotes, you know, like it's yeah. so self, you know, you're like, Oh, it's, and it's not always victim mm. but it can be victim but it's sometimes it's just like, you're just in this self. And so that service to others, it's the thing that pulls you out. It's mm. it just, it, it's like, you can't even help it. You get present, you're pulled out of it and you're, you know, you're no longer in your stuff anymore. Mm. And I, I think that's what the beauty of it is. Um, and probably why that's why you hear that all the time. Yeah. It's just such a good tool. Mm. You know? Getting back to choice and those that we have when we're faced with a trauma or a loss or grief, um, it's really how we react to those events, I think, uh, that makes it or breaks it for us, isn't it? Uh, yeah. I, I know, you know, I, I've had significant loss and, and I know I've ended up going down a dark path as well and it takes a while for you to get out the other side and go, oh, you know, I'm okay with this now. Um, but I think probably in hindsight for me, I think probably one of the things that would have helped get there faster is actually getting help from someone else. Yeah. And... A lot of the times in healing, some of us don't do that. We try and do it all by ourselves. <laughs> it takes 10 times longer. It's more painful. <laughs> yeah, I think I, I, I th- that, that getting support from an external resource is, um, I mean, I, I, I think there's for some reason the word speed, mm-hmm. he, you know, because you just said like it happens faster. And I know there's everybody's different. And, and, you know, there's not like a, okay, you're going to come to this grief group. And after this grief group, you're going to, you're going to be fine. You know, we know, I think we know enough about, you know, grief that it's like, you're, you're, but you're gonna, you, you might not be fine after this, or, or you might be in a different place than your, 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 your soul, your buddy that's across from you in the same grief group. Mm. But, but that like, that being able to, yeah, you've made the choice to be there. You've made the choice to bring in support for yourself. That camaraderie of being with others, knowing that you are not alone, but also that um, this is like a human, this is a, a human experience that mm. we all go through. And um, and uh, seeing others, I think there's something beautiful about seeing others processing their pain allows you the safety to go there for yourself. Um, so, and, and I get that grief groups aren't always everybody's, you know, preference and, but, but then working, if that, if the one-on-one sort of container is, feels more resonant then that you work with somebody who's a professional and, Mm. you know, you're, you find that it's like, there's a safety in it. Yes. It's, it's hard to feel your feelings, but if you don't get them out of the body, you know, if you don't start to process them out of the body, you know, we, we've now know, you know, we know all the studies that show that the body keeps the score. Like Mm. we don't, when we keep all of these um, emotions and don't start to, you know, and and sometimes we don't know how to start that process, but that's where it's like pull in the resources Mm. because, you know, we know how to get you to start those processes. And I think there's the fear around like, I don't know if I want to go into that, but Mm. like the alternative is it's like going in, there's always going to be this, like, there's going to be this light and you're going to have somebody holding your hand, Mm. you know? And so, so that, but to to back to choice, it's like make the choice of getting, you know, having the friend, the support to, to walk you through it instead of just being alone in it and, and trying to, you know, self correct self um, you know, cause we, st- cause I think what a lot of times happens is, is we stay up here in our yeah. minds when we're on it, when we're just left on our own and, and the mind is useful for a lot of things, but when it comes to processing emotions, it is not your best friend. You mm-hmm. know, it's, it's getting, you know, into the, into this heart space so that you can really understand what's happening. And, and then there's all sorts of tools that are out there to help that. And, and, to help that process and knowing which one is, is like kind of the perfect tool for you. A lot of people don't really know. And so you kind of, that's the beauty of feeling it out with people, Mm. you know, like whether, you know, depending on if you're like a, I mean, think about like, you know, maybe what you were like as a kid, you know, did you, 
Were you like an energetic hyper kid or were you a kid that was quiet and, you know, re read in your bedroom or like to draw or, you know, you start to kind of tap into things that are like, oh, that's, that's how I truly am on the inside. Like how I've always been, who I've always been. Um, and, and that's kind of, to me, that's the approach I take is the way in is trying to find out what is key to, to how that person really would naturally want to process emotions out of their body. Mm. I, I'm not sure if that's, you know, if that sounds clear. Yeah. I'm saying. It. Yeah, totally. And, you know, you kind of um, hinted there uh, timelines in grief, you know, um, there is no perfect timeline for grief, you know, Um Everybody's going to be unique. Everybody's going to have a different experience. Um, there may be other trauma on top of this grief that's making it harder to process. But really, I think the biggest thing you can do is be kind to yourself because, you know, there is no perfect timeline that you have to meet. And if anybody tells you that, just <laughs> you need to ignore it because it's all about you, not anybody else's opinion. Yeah. Yeah, because it's like, things come out of you you don't even expect yeah. to you know in those and and you just have to just let it all come out like you know I mean I think a good example is like what if you're just like known by everybody that is in your life to be the sweetest you know person in the world but like in the midst of this you're 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 almost like leave me alone like yeah. <laughs> barking orders at people getting or you know getting really ornery or getting really you know short about the you know it's just not in your nature it's because you know there's so much going on inside of you and and it's almost like I like it um sometimes the vision of I mean I have a cat so I you know but like any animal you know how like when they're wounded it's like they go to the corner yeah and they get and they just lick their wounds and they just kind of want to be like left alone and and you have every single variation of human that like you know some want to go out and rage and mm. be with people and some want to just like so it's like the full, when we have such a full spectrum yeah. of needs i just wish that was like some billboards billboards that we saw all the time places like just just let people be how they need to be yep. in their grief like there is no rules you get to do whatever you need to do you know mm. and you know, unapologetic i guess is like unapologetically go through exactly and you know it's going to spark different emotions depending on who you are and how you process things as well and and all of that is okay and i I quite often have a lot of conversations on this show as well around how we just don't know our emotions. We don't understand the human body and how it processes stuff, yet we've all got one, you know? Like it's it's so funny how we don't get how we work, um, but we just <laughs> fumble on through. <laughs> I know, I know. And, and, you know, the different defences that we have, the yep. different masks that we wear, and it's all our conditioning, you know, from where we grew up or the household we had or, um, you know, the parents that we had. It's like, you know, the ancestral things that come through. I mean, the list is long and that's what is it. I mean, I think that's what makes it also beautiful, but it also makes it also complicated. You know, when you're mm. in a relationship with people, your friends, your family, your partners, your your pets, whoever, you, you really have to mm. like, it's like, wow there's we're we're the same being yep but we're vastly different so different <laughs> what we carry and what we carry around with us you know yeah now for you and for the people that you work with how important is it to learn to accept things like death it's part of the part of the process that I take people through that is part of it. I mean, there is the, you know, the different, the different, it's like the, the acceptance versus, you know, there, there's kind of like the confusion and like the, the ambivalence, the frustration, there's like this, all the emotions that grief has and sort of at the end is always kind of like acceptance, mm -hmm. you know, and, and, um, and it, it is, it's essential, but it's also, um, I think really kind of cool to see the different ways that 
people accept. I mean, depending on your beliefs or depending on, you know, where you started from, you know, the shock, a lot of times the the shock of whatever happened, whether it was was bereavement or you, you know, divorce or whatever is going on in that lost space um, to kind of move through. It is the natural order of those emotions that you go through to finally get to that place of, okay. And, and that acceptance place, it's, it's, I think it's really empowering. I mean, I think there's like a um, a perspective choice that has to sort of be learned through the grief process, and mm-hmm. and it's because you know the 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 pain of the uh, in the case of bereavement, the the pain of losing somebody, or or not just bereavement. I mean, divorce, breakup. Mm-hmm. You know, the loss of someone that you love um, is the pain of that is, you know, may never go away. It may just lighten up. It may, you know, so there's that, that happens, but to accept then, you know, okay, this is, this is, this has happened. Um, This is what life is going to be like now. This is, that you know, I mean, there's all sorts of spiritual, you know, ways of looking Mm. at things that, I mean, I don't know that's this is this the time to get into things like that but you know there's there's things you can seek out and learn to have a perspective on it of like you know what is this teaching me you know once people get to that acceptance space it's super empowering because it becomes like what what is there a gift in this is mm. there something to be um learned is there something that i get to pay forward is, I mean, not only am I be, because I, I think a great example of one of the gifts, because it was, you know, this, the loss that I experienced, the loss that most people experience, it is incredibly painful. Mm. But I think once I got to the acceptance of my experience, um, there was, there was like things like freedom that came out of it. There were things that like, that was like there's some burdening, you know, ideals that relationships had in the space of the people that I lost. There was like some examining of um, of how, you know, the interdependency, the codependencies. There's just like some things that I was like, wow, like I, I became more of who I am out of some of the, the, the loss that I've experienced. And so I think people, you know, when when seeing things happen at first it's like, you're just trying to survive, Mm. you know, and that's where having someone to help you through a process is so, so important because you're, you're just trying to like feed yourself, get sleep, get through the day. But then in going through that, as you get, and you move closer to acceptance, that's when the gifts start to happen and you start to see things in a different way. But sometimes it's like, you can't get there on your own. You know, it's like, it's really helpful to kind of work with people that that can help you just sort of be a guide in that way Mm. you know and often in you know those first stages of grief you're not thinking straight you know you your your mind is a mess and to have someone there to guide you through and help you see common sense can be really really helpful uh, yeah. Because often you, you know, it's almost like a state of depression that you go into immediately that, yeah. you know, you're just not thinking straight. Yeah, you you can't. I mean, it's, you know, on, on the physical, physiological side of mm. things, it's, yeah, your your nervous system is in such a state that you can't even, you know, it, it's like, it's like anything that happens when, when your mind is altered. I don't know if, I mean if anybody's ever had like long COVID or the, you know, COVID things that the residual mm. um, things that happen where, you know, your mind, that, that thought like COVID brain or yep. things, it's like, it's, it's like, that's the same sort of physiological idea that's happening to your body. When you go, co- when you go through bereavement, when you mm. go through the loss of a loved one, your, your nervous system isn't, you know, it's fight or flight. And and depending on what you're accustomed to doing, that's where you're going to choose to go. And, um, and that's okay for a little bit, you know, you're, you're reacting. Mm, it's normal. But, um, <laughs> but, but yeah, yeah. But it's like, but 
that's it, it's like not everybody has um even in your own family sometimes it, it's you're not all handling it the same way yeah so while while you think you could be like hey brother and sister or whoever you have in your life like let's be there for each other everybody's in their own experience yeah and and that that was that's a wild you know revelation too mm. you think just it's it's kind of like you're you're a party of one and you yeah. gotta come come through this uh you know in your own way a curious that's, thought that's beautiful yeah a curious thought i had um when you were talking then uh, melissa was are we not taught about any of this kind of stuff growing up you know we're not taught about what happens when you lose something what happens when someone dies where yeah. you know like we're not taught how to handle that and so quite often we're at the you know at the whim of whatever our emotions do at that time um or what we see you know uh, those people who've raised us do um if we do have that experience as a child and yeah it's just one of those things that we don't talk wow. about we don't we don't teach kids about and I don't know it just blows my mind I that know. we all eventually I mean, I, experience it yeah yeah I think you know different cultures do it better than mm. um than at least uh, you know I, you know our the countries that we live in um but I, I agree it's something that it could be argued that this is something that should be you know taught more in schools and maybe this is where you know, schools and, and religion kind of like people argue that mm. like who, who owns that or, <laughs> you know, like, you know, which is like hard to, it's like, come on, that's, it's, it, it's something, because I think there's a lot of things that we're not taught in school, oh. you know, that, oh, we, yes. <laughs> that was, you know, that we need to, that we need to grow up and learn. But I, if we could take any notes from our Eastern, you know, brothers and sisters is that, that it's like you you don't it's like it's just a changing of a new of another um like a, another energy and mm. and it, it's just um and and I and I don't know if that's triggering to say you know because I know everyone has different beliefs mm. and things but it's um it, it's just it's like you're not saying goodbye but but even just that conversation of being like oh so what happens is like this physical form of the person is no longer here but you know just the same way that you have a relationship with your higher self you have a relationship you know you could start to talk to you know children about that in that way but I agree I I was this it was not discussed in my family Mm -hmm. it was you know we were just kind of like get it you know, get over it. It was, um, I had, so I had a couple of grandparents die before yeah. my parents, but you know, but it was, um, it was a real eye opener and, and, you know, it's something that we're all going to have experience. It's not like we're all any, nobody's getting out of the, of losing someone you love, like, mm. you know, before you lose your own life, it's, it's going to happen. So, yeah. um, it's just, it's, a, it's important and it's an important you know, process that can be really beautiful. And my, you know, my mission is to bring, not just bring comfort through the process, but to, to create a greater life coming out of that. Mm. Like, because it it often does change you in ways that you didn't, you know, you didn't imagine it would, Mm. you know, um, you're often not the same person in some way, some more extreme than others. You know, um, I, I think I was a little bit more of an extreme case where I felt I kind of took a look around at my whole life and there was a lot of things out of alignment. Some people are just like maybe a little bit misaligned on, 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 you know, just their view on, on what happens to Mm. us or, or how they handle, how they handle the passing or, or just, you know what, just empathy. Yeah. Just sometimes just that, like all of a sudden it just becomes like, Oh, like there's, you just feel people and feel for people in a completely different way than you ever did before. Mm. And it, and, and I don't know why it takes the stuff happening to us for that to happen, but it <laughs> I know, <just> does. <laughs> I know. And, <laughs> and it's really, you know, there's some people who come into your life that uh, when they leave it, they help you see the, the value of life and 
how short time is. And I think, yeah. you know, as part of this evolution, as you said, sometimes when we experience grief or loss or someone passing, that, you know, we also change as part of that that change. And again, you know, we, we evolve every single day and it is part of this evolution, um, you know, between the first and the last breath we take. Right. I, I mean, when we talk about the things that we want for our lives um, and, you know, you, you, you get, if you get into like conversations with people about what you, what you, um, you know, the law of attraction and what, what you gravitate towards or what magnetizes towards you or what you call in, you know, how we, we just subconsciously and unconsciously call in, you know, so we have to get real clear, mm. you know, how we're thinking about things and how we're speaking about things and how we're feeling about things because, you know, even when we don't know we're doing it, we're, you know, attracting or detracting things that we may or may not want. Mm. And so, and I think in the case of, 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 of timing of death or when things happen to us, it's like, you know, it's worth questioning, like, mm. you know, what, what, why now what's happening? Why, why did this all happen? You know, now, and, and that's usually something that's like, you know, down the road a little, yeah. you know, when, the, when the healings happened, of course, it's like, it's like, when, you know, when you're in the nine one one phase of, of things just happening, that that's, that's a very precious time. And, you know, that's to be handled in a very specific way, you know, it just, for people and especially as practitioners on the opposite end of people, you know, mm. it's, 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 it's like meeting them where they're at. Like some people want to talk about that stuff right away. Cause they're so curious. I was kind of like, like that. I kind of wanted to like dive right into like death for lack of a better word, death and life. And what, you know, what the, the meaning and, and where does, what does every different branch of this world of spirituality think about all of it? You know, mm. it's like, it became like a research project for me. Um, but I think some people are, you know, a little bit, they could be like the polar end of that, you know, where they're like, I don't, I just want to get, I just want to live again. That's it. Mm. I don't want to know anything. I just want to, I just want to, I want to feel good again. I don't want to, you know, I don't, I just don't want to feel like this anymore. And, and, you know, to not feel like this anymore, it takes a little bit of work Mm. to get there. And speaking of work, can you take us through the kind of um, process that you have with people when they come to you and they're experiencing grief and want help? Yeah, for sure. I have, um, when I work with people one-on-one, I have a program that I take them through. And I mean, it's, it's, I say six to nine months, but I mean, it's not a, it's, it's a container that I just, it's, it's, it's about really kind of have, spending time with them and taking inventory. So we spend a lot of time in the first, like in the first month just really getting to know where they're at and like getting to know what uh, types of ways of working through processes feels most true for them. Like what feel, makes them feel really grounded in something. And and that takes a little, um, you know, there's different exercises that we do together. And then from there um, it, 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 we go into like a processing of just letting go and releasing. And that gets, um, if, if they're open to it, if people are open to it, I try to uh, do that a little bit with somatic work. Um, so just processing things out of the body, like mm-hmm. using, you know, like energy and physical physicality things. And, and, um, but sometimes it's, you know, it's writing or, or, um, but, but I do that together with them. It's like, rather than send them away with homework, I try to, you know, um, suggest and also push them into doing that together because then I know they'll do it um, and and we can do it together um, and then it's like from there we move into the space of you know what's been you know your big your big dreams your big aspirations what for yourself you, you know what have you always wanted to do to sort of get them in a little bit of a creative space um, and and again this is over the course of you know several, several weeks and several months, um, depending on their pace. And then, um, we do a lot of exploratory work and do different, um, exercises. If it's like, for example, if it's like, if I'm working with somebody around bereavement, we might do different exercises that are related to the person that they lost, writing letters to them, writing letters to um, them, writing, what would they say, writing a letter to us, doing different art type 
projects to sort of process things out that way. But if it's like in the case of somebody who, you know, I'm, I had a severe job loss, it, it was my identity, or, you know, I have some clients who are also retire, like going into retirement. Mm. So there, so those are like identity kind of things, yep. you know, like, especially that, and that, that goes along with the sobriety thing we were talking about earlier, mm. like clients who I work with that are going through like sobri- sobriety or retirement. Those, those are kind of containers that are kind of, that feeling of more of a loss of self. So we're more working with like, what do we need to release about ourselves and, and kind of let go mm. that that no longer serve us? And, and, you know, what is this new imagined way that we want to be in the world? And then that is the, so, so depending on what has, has gone, you know, the loss that's happened to the person is, is how I approach it. Mm -hmm. Um, but then, but then it's like, and then at the, and towards the end of working with somebody, that's when it gets a little bit more tactile. So I spend a good, like three quarters of my chunk of time working with people in this processing, um, support, um, empowering phase. And then at the end, we get a little bit more tactile where we're mapping out, like, you know, what's next for you and like, what kind of habits are going on and like, should we change some things? And like, do we need to like create new ways of thinking? Like, is there some, you know, Mm -hmm. are you, is there any like sabotaging that's going on and and things like that, you know, but that's, that's at the end when um, there's, there's been some movement and some, you know, a little bit more growth, a little bit more um, acceptance, Mm -hmm. you know, a little bit more strength. And, um, and just make sure they have a, a, a solid plan leaving, you know, so that it's like, okay, you're, you don't, you know, the, the goal is like not to need to work together for yeah. a long time, you know, mm. like just for whatever it is you you need and then send you on your way. And then, um, and then I also just do, you know, I do a lot of workshop facilitations with organizations and things like that so that I can kind of, it's more of a facilitating teaching mm role in you know in virtual rooms and things for um for bigger organizations and that's that's really gratifying too it's really great to help people in that way amazing stuff and um what kind of results are people seeing after working with you they are seeing they there's just there's a a lightness a um an unburdenedness a hope um, uh, a feeling of norm that they, they feel like they're back to normal. They feel like they can kind of be regain what it is, you know, that they, they feel like they, they lost about themselves or what got confusing for a little while. There's, there's just deep clarity. They come out feeling like l- lighter and more like a feeling of healing, but they also just feel that they have a map forward. They have a plan, an action plan. And, and so depending on what it is they're looking to do, and some people are, are doing radical change. Like they're Mm. doing radical transformations. Cause like, you know, in, in many cases, people are like, I don't even, I can't, I I can't even do what I used to do anymore. Like as a job, like, I think I need a career change or Mm. I think I need to get out of a relationship that's been really, you know, um, uh, destabilizing for me or, you know, there, when, when these wake up calls happen in these cases, it's such a, like a soul opening, a soul awakening that Mm. it's, it's like, it's confusing. And then the biggest thing that they walk away is just like that, that release of, of confusion. You know, it's like, I feel solid. I feel grounded. I feel clear on what is next for me. And that is, that's always like the goal, you know, coming in, it's always like we talk about, what they what they want coming out of this and it's usually a lot of feelings things like mm. a lot of like intangible things yeah but like coming out of it those intangible feelings are um are addressed but then they have like they have a big they have a solid plan of what's next for them and it's sounds really um yeah sounds like freedom freedom yeah, yeah. well and we said that in the beginning yeah the very beginning. <laughs> it comes full circle it's like freedom is like you know, sometimes that's the surprising thing about free. I mm. think with acceptance, sometimes can have that feeling of of freedom. And who, I mean, I don't know what your your top value is in your life, but 
that's one of them for me. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I think a lot of people would have that as one of their top five values, I think. Yeah, um, it's I think something so. that we would all value. Um, totally. Now, Melissa, I'm going to put you on the spot uh, because I, I reckon there's people listening to this who are thinking, oh, God, I, I don't want to feel like this anymore and I, I want to... I want to let go of all this stuff I'm hanging on to and I, I want to see things differently. Um, they may be experiencing grief, trauma, whatever it is, loss. Um, what would be the top three things that you would recommend to them to do first if they want to make a change? If they want to make a change. Um, if they, I think that the first thing is to just realise, you know, with with trauma, with grief, if they're in a state that they don't want to be in anymore and they're unsure of what to do to just, I mean, if, if there's any friend, you know, if there's any trusted person in their life that that can just listen to them initially, like, like this is like fresh when this is something has just happened because oftentimes it takes a minute to, to, to um, research somebody who, you know, people you could bring in for support. Mm. But um, that's that's what I would say first. And second, I would say to to just find, I think find what is the most, the thing that has them the most blocked. If they can just understand that like releasing their emotions, releasing their feelings, starting to get that process going, it's what is going to start it's, it's like t- trying to take the first step into any arena, into anything that's scary. Is It's always scary to take the first step. But if you can just start either sometimes, like I find podcasts or books, especially if you're like, I'm not sure if I want to like get, bring in help. I, I really recommend podcasts or books on the topic because it just starts to get you thinking and starts to get you moving from your head into your heart and that can get the emotional process going. Um, and then if you feel that you can handle the process on your own, then just keep journaling about that or Mm. keep, you know, moving your body about it, some sort of way that is innate to you. Like if you were like that, going back to what I was saying earlier, it's like, if you were that kid that was you know, I love to dance or I love to draw or I love to write or I love to go out and, you know, I don't know, go to the gym and do boxing, whatever, that's going to be the thing that's going to resonate with you most. Um, And I think the third thing is if, if you, if you're able to get support, that's a hundred percent the best way. And, and there's, you know, groups that are, you know, there's nonprofit groups that you can look on the inner, you know, just look in your area on the internet. They're incredibly, I cannot tell you how helpful that they are. Mm. Like, I, you know, just being in these rooms for so many years, it's like, there's just watching it. It's incredibly helpful. And then being able to work with someone one-on-one, if that's more preferred then finding those, those people to do that, that's, that would be my, but you know, in the, in the, in the first stages you know, we all have access to books and podcasts and, and content. And I think that starts to, you know, guide you mm. um, until you can, you know, get with people who are either in a group or a professional um, or, you know, people have local, you know, if there's like a spiritual center or a church organization, you know, it doesn't all have to be therapists. Not everybody can afford mm. therapists and practitioners and coaches. And, you know, that's the, the way of the world. It's not always everybody's possibility. Everybody doesn't have it in their insurance plans that they can do that. So, mm. um, but there is a lot of content out there uh, that's available. And, you know, I have oodles of content on my website too. And, um, and I'm happy always to talk to people to help direct them. Mm. You know, it's like, even it's like have, you know, book a 30 minute call to even just, I can guide you in what might be best for you. Mm. And, and, you know, there's lots of people like me out there that can do that. So just know that you have support. I think that's the biggest thing. Um, maybe I, I'd change my answer a little bit for number one <laughs> and just say like, know that you have support because um, that's the biggest thing I think people forget. 
Yeah. They're just, al- they're alone. But they're alone in this. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to go through this alone. Uh, and there are people out there who can support you through it. And I think, you know, that's probably got to be one of the most important things you can do is, is reach out. Don't try and do this all on your own. You yeah. don't have to do that. Yeah. Yeah. It will be the, and you know, it's the biggest gift for people. People want to help you. That's the other thing. It's like, mm. don't go into that. Like, I can't, like, I don't want to bother people. People want to help. Yeah. They don't want to see you going through this either on your own. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. Um, thank you so much for that, Melissa. That that was really valuable, um, that, you know, for those listening. Um, I know you've been mentioning as we've been talking about the, the physical and moving and getting it out of your body and um, I think a lot of people forget about that, you know, like they think, oh, no, I just need to go and mope around for a bit and I'll be fine. Um, but getting up and getting moving is really important to get those emotions out of the body that are stored because if they're not moved out, they can actually develop into something more serious, can't they? Right, right. That's absolutely true. It can either be something physical in the body or it can be something, you know, it can be the um, psychological Mm. effects. So in either case, it's, it's, yeah, it's like, you know, the, the, have people say that disease is dis-ease in your body and right so we hear that a lot and maybe that's maybe the new curriculum in schools we'll teach kids about like stored stuck emotions and that's how we'll talk about grief with them we can only hope imagine that um, (laughs) I mean imagine that but yeah I, I, I there's this event that I do once a month and it's remarkable And it's just like a free event I do locally here because we have such great hiking, Mm. you know, right? So it's like, so it's, it's a combination of just hiking. So you've got the movement, you've got talking, you know, you just, you're, you're in it, either a small group or sometimes it's just me and another person. Sometimes it's me and a few, but you get to talking about what's on your heart. You know, you, so it's the movement and the talking and something about the rhythmic just walking one step in front of the other. And you're not like one-on-one facing each other. You're like, you know, you're in a line and you're Mm. walking. And then afterwards we do an exercise um, where we do like a grief exercise that I, you know, any one of the various ones that I have, like I'll just pick one for that day. Um, And, and, and then, and then everybody goes about their day by like noon. And it's, it's like, there's no, there's no pharmaceutical in the world that can work like that. It's mm. just, it's like everybody, no matter what it's like, so there's, so that tells you a couple of things that's movement, that's nature and that's community. And those three things are just, it's, it's like the magic pill. It's, it's literally like, there's no Xanax that <laughs> competes with those three things, you know? Um, Such and, an incredible combo, isn't it? You know, like it is. Just yeah. and it would help people get out of their head as well, you know, and actually yeah. get into their heart and actually process this stuff. Um, and I yeah. love what you were saying before. Uh, and I know journaling is such a big thing for us to process anything, but um, I know some people who've lost uh, loved ones, you know, through freak accidents and things like that, and they've written them letters because they've ended up really angry in their loss, and so they've written letters to them and then um, put them away. Uh, like like a gift to them once they're gone and yeah. um, it's helped them process all the things that they now have lost because they're suddenly gone. Um, that is a really useful tool for people to yeah. use as part of their healing. And even if you're that angry, you could go burn that letter then or tear it up or whatever. Yeah. 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 It's so good. That's like, that's you, you're, you're describing, um, like a, there's like this letting go yeah. releasing exercise too, that it's, it is, it's, there's something really powerful about that. And, and if there's anger involved or if there's just like something you're trying to like release a, about yourself even, and, and doing that action of like tearing it or burning it or, um, or, or even, you know, when you've written, if, if you're sad and you're, or, you know, you've got an emotion towards someone who's passed and you write a letter to them and you just share it. Mm. There's, I, it's people are, it's like, you almost can't believe it, but just being able to have someone hear you read this letter, you know, having it be out there. It, it's like, that's the thing that we're, I mean, we've known this about our bodies forever, but it's like, that's what it's getting it out. Yep. And that's where, you know, I think that's where, uh, you know, I do have some clients sometimes who are like, are you going to make me go home and journal? Like, that's what every, come on. And it's like, no, no, this is why we're going to do this right here together. 
because you're going to see like, cause I think people like intellectually are just like, I'm just going to write a letter. Like what is the, how powerful is that? And mm-hmm. it's like, but, but it's a somatic release. You Absolutely. Know, it's like you're, yeah. It's yeah. like sitting down with your best friend and just telling them everything that you would never tell anyone. Um, and yeah. nobody has to see it. Like it is just so powerful to get it out and, and there's no rules, just let it out. You know, there's no yeah, boundaries. Yeah. Let it go. Yeah. And I, I think it's even recommended to sometimes be like, put up, put the darkest stuff. Yeah. Like get the darkest stuff out. Like Absolutely. put it out there. Yeah. Because we all have these, no, nobody wants to like admit that they do, but we all do. We have our dark and our light and it's, it's a beautiful part of who we are. Yeah. Well, Melissa, as you could probably tell, I could talk about this all day. Um, if people want to find out more about what you do and Wishbone and, and get in touch with you, where can they go? They can go to my website. Um, Wishbone is spelled a little bit uniquely. It's spelled W-Y-S-H-B-O-N-E, and that's because wish, the Y is shaped like a wishbone. So that's easier to remember. So it's wishbonewellness.com. And then it's the same on Instagram and Facebook. It's, it's wishbone underscore wellness. And, um, and yeah, I have, you know, free materials online and that's, that's how they can find me. And I'm available to do, um, facilitation of workshops or, you know, work with people one-on-one. But again, I can't stress enough. If someone just wants to like book a call to talk about resources and where they could get pointed in the right direction. Yep. I love helping people. Awesome. Too, so you're amazing. Uh, now I've got the last big question for you. What's the change you'd like to see in the world and how can we bring it to life? Um, okay, the, 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 the thing that's coming up the quickest is because of the experience I just had in my trip. And it is why are we continuing to do what we do to each other in this mm. world? I just, it's like, it, it's unfathomable. It's like, I can't even, I can't even, like, full <laughs> stop. And so why... So that is the only way that that's going to change. And I know people will argue this has been going on for millions, you know, thousands and thousands of years, but it's like, it's love. And it's the simple, it's like, how do we get ourselves and our cultures out of fear and into love and Mm. stop being afraid of each other? And, and so, I mean, I, I feel like, Personally, this is the work I'm doing is trying to do that as a mission. Yeah. But if if everyone could get into to get into being more of the light, it's it's the only way we're gonna get there. So I know it's not a overnight pill to take, mm. you know, but um, but it's it's we gotta get out of this fear. The fear that we live in is is destroying us, and and it's like we have the choice. It's simple. Absolutely, and you know, there's a bit of a theme coming through when I'm asking that question recently, and and it's people just want love. You know, they just want universal love, and. In the back of my mind, just then, as you were saying that, I could hear John Lennon singing "Imagine," and I was just like, you know, imagine if that was here yeah. now. Oh we God, wouldn't the, <laughs> we wouldn't have all these systems for war for protection for all of these things it just wouldn't be necessary yeah if we could have everybody just have an ego death all at one <laughs> moment like if the whole world yeah <laughs> just have an ego death and then we could all be like okay so nobody needs to have like all the power and all the things you know it just blows my mind could you imagine a world like that like I know. there's so many things I that just, would not be necessary. We're we're all one. Why don't we get that? <laughs> mm, exactly. <laughs> you know? I, I always um, reframe things sometimes when we get in this space and I, I go, can you imagine if, you know, cavemen were in their cave and they had a look into the future or to today, they'd think how stupid we all were. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. I know. It would be, it's just, it's, un, it's just, it's unbelievable. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, Melissa, I can't thank you enough for being a part of the ethical evolution and being the change with us. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for me. I appreciate it. Thanks for listening to the Ethical Evolution Podcast. If you're ready to be the change and would love to work with me on finding your voice through spiritual coaching or creating your own podcast with impact, visit ethicalchangeagency.com.
If you are enjoying the show, please subscribe to the YouTube channel. It's growing every day with great content and highlights you may not have heard on the podcast. In addition, please subscribe to the podcast on Spotify or Apple and why not leave a five-star review? If you're not following me on social media, you can find me at Ethical Change Agency on Instagram, LinkedIn, Facebook and YouTube and at DJ Bindi on TikTok and Instagram. If you're interested in diving deeper into the ethical evolution with me, I've created a membership program that allows me to bring you more in-depth, exclusive content without relying on paid ads. My goal is to deliver members way more value than the cost of the subscription. Benefits include Ask Me Anything episodes. I've interviewed hundreds of people from around the world, so imagine what you could ask. Access exclusive bonus content only for members that focuses on the downloads I get through my conversations that include actionable tips. Support Ethical Change Agency and the Ethical Evolution podcast on its mission to amplify change makers who make the world a better place. Access to global connections who can help you make greater impact in the world. Meditate with me and discounted spiritual coaching or podcast consulting with me at 15% off. That value alone pays for your membership. For only $7 a month or $70 a year, you can access all these benefits of an Ethical Evolution Emergence Membership. If you want to learn more and access these benefits, head on over to ethicalchangeagency.com. Hey guys, it's Miriam Love here, and I want to share something very special with you. Check out my new release, All In, the Spanish remixes, out now on Electric Hass Records. And always remember, be love. Share love, all love. Available now wherever you listen to music. Dreaming of the perfect event or longing for a clutter free space? I'm Stephanie with I'm with Steph, where your vision becomes a reality. From magical weddings to transformative home organizing, we bring you expertise and passion to every project. Whether you're planning a grand celebration or seeking peace through organization, we tailor our services to meet your unique needs. I'm with Steph. To explore our services and connect with me directly, visit imwithsteph.com. Mention ElectraCast for a 20% discount.